Hello again, everybody. It's Steve Grizzetti, the man from Movie Picks, and here we are in part four of our eight part series basic training for Adobe Premiere Elements. And here in part four, we've started to assemble our movie on the timeline. Uh, our movie is starting to get interesting, it's starting to tell a story. And one of the things you can do, of course, to make your movie more interesting or add to the process of telling a story is to add transitions rather than mere cuts between the clips. Transitions are going to help you tell the story. They signal a change in a thought or show that you're leaving one scene, moving on to another. And there are many kinds of transitions. There are huge transitions libraries, both in quick view and in advanced view. And the process of adding a transitions is not that different between the two views. Now, the most basic transition you can add, of course, is a fade in. You want to begin your movie with a fade in and end with a fade out most of the time. To add a fade in, you simply right click on a clip on your timeline. And from the fade sub menu, select fade in or fade out. We're going to fade in our audio and video. And you notice when we do that, if you look down at the timeline, you'll see a couple of dots have been added to this little rubber band that runs horizontally through the clips. This rubber band in audio represents the volume level. Well, in video, it represents the video level or actually opacity. In other words, it's transparent when it's a zero when it's at 100%, it's fully opaque. You can see the clip completely. So the transition between 0% and 100% is what causes or creates the transition between fade to black and fade in completely. And likewise, the audio from 0% audio on up to full audio. So that's a very simple process. A very simple way to add a transition is simply to create a fade in at the beginning of a clip. Most of the transitions you're going to be doing are more interesting than that. And you'll find the library of those transitions over here on the right hand side on the toolbar on the right at the very bottom. Click on transitions. And we've got over 70 transitions. But you can find your transitions either by browsing through the various categories of transitions or by browsing through them as you just scroll through the list of all of them or by going on a quick search by typing in right here where the little magnifying glass is we can type in band wipe for instance and it will do a real-time search of the band wipe which we can drag between two clips on the timeline I'm just going to drag that right down between those two clips and there's our transition this transition uses bands, I think seven of them here, coming in from the side to transition from one scene to another. Yep, four from one side, three from the other. There's our seven. And that's our band wipe. Whenever you add a transition to your timeline, it will automatically open up the transition control panel, which you can also open simply by double clicking on the transition on your timeline. And here we can make some adjustments to the transitions. We can reverse it so that instead of the bars coming in from the side to transition in, the bars come in from the side to transition out. We can add a border between those bars. I'm just going to click and drag across the zero here to add a border. So now we got lines around the outside of the clips or the bars as they come in, the bands as they come in. I'm going to set that back to zero simply by selecting it and typing zero in. You control the color of the border. And in some of these transitions, there are more advanced customizations you can do. So if I click on the custom button here for band wipes, you notice I can select the number of bands. So we've got seven by default. I can make that up to, I think, 32. And now we have a very different sort of transition as we see 32 bands come in to transfer or to transition from one scene to another. You can make the transitions longer or shorter by stretching them on the timeline or by manually changing their duration length here on the transition control panel. And there are audio transitions as well as video transitions. If I select the transitions panel button here and if I select the audio transitions options, you see that I only have crossfade options constant gain, constant power, and exponential fade. These are all variations of the same transition. It's just a crossfade from one audio source to another. In most cases, constant gain will do the best for you, but there are other options, and I challenge you to hear the difference, really, between these three. But constant gain is usually the one that's considered the default selection in the case of an audio transition. Transitions are fun to play with. Like I say, it's got a huge library of them here to play with. But you don't want to overdo them. You don't want them to get distracting and distract from your story. 
but used in moderation, they can be fun and they can enhance the story that you're trying to tell. And that's it for part four. In part five, we're going to discuss video effects and how to add and customize some of them in part five of our eight-part basic training for Adobe Premiere Elements. I'm Steve Grizzetti. I hope to see you then.